Check out this beautiful specimen of Ginkgo biloba thelma. It's in great fall color. I love this one. It has the large leaves as well as tube leaves as well as the stringy lace leaves. We consider this one a lace leaf Ginkgo because it has that thin growth in it. And I just love the form on this one. It's a distinctly male form even though it's called thelma. Great Ginkgo to be growing. Actually, international maple cider, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, they're all different stages of running around through here right now. Oh, you're Mr. Are you with Mr. Maple? Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the owners. Okay. I've heard of you. My friend Maureen buys a lot. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're the big maple geeks. Yeah, I, um, I bet I've got two friends who have uh, lost their Japanese maple oh, no. due to the hurricane. So oh, geez. Yeah, that's no good. Recommending that they go to you. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That maybe they upgrade when they... Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's beautiful. Wow, this is gorgeous in here. Yeah, what a collection. That's awesome. Guys, is there anything more cinematic than walking through a bamboo garden like this? I mean, it feels like you're in a movie. This place is gorgeous. I mean, Look, check, check out this bridge. Wow, well, that's just gorgeous. You see that? I mean, you look at all this stuff, you don't even notice this giant Mesocoy Ogon you're walking under. <laughs> Check out the work this guy's doing. Let's go up here and ask him about it. You get asked about this job probably more so than anything else in the garden because right. it's so intense. Uh, the maples are probably the second thing that I work the most on. Oh, cool. And what I'm doing right now is called needling, which in, in, in the most brief form is just preemptively removing older needles that mm. are going to naturally slough off three to five years anyways. Yeah. But it's mostly a functional thing. We're letting in more air. We're letting in more light. Mm -hmm. We're giving more energy for the new candles to grow and yeah. elongate. But if you step back, you can see that there is an aesthetic effect as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just leaving these upright needles gives it a completely different character than let's say this tree behind us, mm -hmm. which I haven't touched yet. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's pretty classic for a Japanese garden to have Japanese black pines. Yeah, yeah. It becomes so emblematic of a Japanese garden. So we spend a lot of time and resources on these things. Eli, I love the work you're doing here. This is beautiful. Thank you. That means so much uh, to me. This is just, I mean, it's so aesthetically pleasing and it just, it looks amazing here in the garden. Thank you. I, I love how you take these and just sort of create just these entrances to the gardens and you plant some mass planting, but then 
at the same time you have specimens that just go out and stand out by themselves. Absolutely. And what's one common question I get is people often will confuse these with bonsai because yeah. they are small. And I explain to people that the, one of the main differences is these are responsive to their environment. They are in their context. They are growing into the light. They are interplaying with the trees around them. Mm -hmm. A bonsai is a microcosm unto itself. It's a whole world just on its own and isn't right. responding to its environment. Oh, that's a perfect way to explain it. Absolutely. And also all the management we do is just with our fingers. I may carry pruners for every once in a while, taking a dead branch or a branch that's growing bizarrely straight down. Uh -huh. But in an ideal world, 99.9% .9 of the work we do on these black pines is simply with our fingers. Oh, very cool. Very tactile, a satisfying, but slow job. Oh, thank you for uh, taking time to explain this to us. My what, pleasure. What a cool thing and what a cool job. I mean, I always say plant nerds unite. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Thank you. It's meeting yeah. wonderful to meet both yeah, of you. Man. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Sure. I love the bamboo forest back there. Oh, man. Man, check out this Ray Houston over here. Not quite in fall color yet. This one's a high graft. I remember when I saw this one when it was much younger, it's actually grafted about 10 to 12 feet up and letting it weep down from there. It gives it a really high start to it. Really amazing, really amazing plant. You know, if you stake these things up, they'll just keep growing up and up and up too. And it, it's a, you often wonder what's the limit on if you continue to stake that up, how high right. you could actually get it. Well, I've seen in Japan, people create plateaus with them and keep going. You kind of put an inner stock in there, put another palmatum in there to get some more upward growth and then weeping down again. Like one of those root stalks sends up a leader, let it grow, then right. graft into that, and then let it cascade off of that. What yeah. a fun plant. Here in a, in a few weeks, this one's gonna be, you know, neon orangey red, contrasting against this bridge. Check out this Oregon sunset over oh, here. Oh man, that's a nice specimen too. I love that this is perfect shaping for Oregon sunset. Yeah, I love Oregon sunset because it's a red dwarf with such a fun shape. You notice the structure on this plant. It's just lost its red color for the summer, about to go in some red fall color. But the structure on this plant is one of my favorite plants for its structure. It just has that low spreading out habit. Gives something really unique, a traditional Japanese garden themed garden. This would fit so well in. I love Oregon sunset. Yeah, it's gonna light up with some really bright shades of red and that, that fall color. That's where it gets that name Oregon sunset, almost looks like a sunset. You gotta get up in here and check out this shape. It is a dense habit to it. I love how low and spreading it is. auditorium we have right here. We've got the perfect backdrop. This is a great place for a plant talk right here. Just set it up right here. You've got the theater set. High drama going on across the way with this garden. Love it. Got a nice falling waters over there. Big ginkgo over here on your right. Yeah, there is. Things grew quite a bit. Check this ginkgo out. Fairmont. Okay. Ginkgo Globa Fairmont. Nice tree, a little early for fall color, but really cool. Guys, I think this is a Kaori Hime Osmanthus fragrance. Oh man, that I can fragrance. Smell it. That is awesome. Kaori Hime in bloom. Spectacular plant here. Love this plant. Great for bonsai, but we've actually caught it in bloom here in late October, almost November. I mean, it's just covered in white flowers. You can right see, now. even as a young plant, early to flower, very fragrant, very sweet. That aroma smell is here so sweet. 
It's an awesome tea olive with very small foliage. Introduction by our friend Ted Stevens. We talked about this one a lot here on our channel. We love offering Kaori Hime, sometimes referred to as Party Princess in a trademark name. We often offer it as Kaori Hime as well. Great plant. Love this plant. Catching in bloom, what a treat. The aroma is just, it oh, just man, carries up delicious. this area. It's right yeah. beside the walk-in path as we're walking down. And I just turned and I was like, dude, that's Kaori Hime in bloom. Let's go hey, check it out. Let's get a close-up of this and see if you guys can smell it. So the other rice and earlier was actually staked up to a high amount. This is actually one of the ones I saw a while back that is grafted at like 12 feet up. Check out this rice. <laughs> Pretty this awesome. This one's grafted on an extreme like 12 foot standard. Everything's weeping down from there. You get that flagpole with all that weeping growth. Pretty spectacular. And right here we've got a Skeeter's broom. Just walk as we're walking up the pathway. Awesome just to see so many Japanese maples here at Serapy Duke Gardens. Check out this shishi here over here, Brian. Check out this. What's this right here on the right? Maples everywhere. Oh, no, man. That's a broom of some sort. Through here. There's so many different gardens within this one garden. Ah, oh, it's beautiful focal point here of this garden. Shishigashira, not quite in fall color yet. Still in that green stage. This one's gonna be lighting up the garden soon. I love coming to the gardens in the fall. I mean, check out the root system on, is this a bald cypress? Oh my or Don gosh, Redwood? Man, look at that bald cypress that's, over there. That's a Don Redwood. Wow. Anybody like Nabari? <laughs> Check that out. That's insane. See so if you can get some scope of this in here. I mean, we've got the fall color here, but look at this. Look at the roots on that Don Redwood. Wow. Guys, they got the ginkgo over here. They got the Don Redwood over here. They've got some Rodea japonica down here. Some Nishikibuki, Pedicetes Nishikibuki. I mean, this is just such a fun garden. There's so much stuff going on. It's pretty, pretty spectacular. We're making it rain ginkgo leaves. Guys, behind us is one of our favorite shade conifers, Thujopsis dolabrata variegata. It's one of my favorite plants to say, we're hiding the trash cans, but this is anything from a trash plant. Thujopsis dolabrata variegata brings the drama. It's a variegated Thujopsis dolabrata, so it's just got lots of white all across the needles. And it's a shade conifer, so it's a conifer that can handle a lot more shade than a lot of other conifers. Love this plant. It makes more of a shrub at first, and then develops this pyramidal shape as it ages. And as you can see the specimen behind us, it definitely makes a, a showpiece once it's developed into its full form. Guys, check out this bald cypress canopy we're hanging out in here. We've literally provided a shade garden around these rock benches with these amazing weeping bald cypress. Pretty unique way to have some shade for benches right. is weeping bald cypress. I'm not sure if this is Cascade Falls or if this is falling water, but this is pretty spectacular. Yeah, what a cool way to shade this garden in. I mean, your average person's going to come through here, catch a little bit of shade on a hot summer day, and they're sitting here in an umbrella of bald cypress. I mean, this is way cooler than sitting under a pergola. Right. This is living plants just arching out. I mean, it's a living pergola. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I love this. I love this idea.
Guys, check out this Pond Cyrus Tri-Fully Auto Flying Dragon, used as a container plant here in Serapeduke Gardens. What a fun way to enjoy this plant. You know, this one has some uh, fruits to it, but also the, all this gnarliness going on makes a really fun topper to this patio planter. I love this plant because it's really unique and different. It has these huge thorns on it, and it gives it this sort of unique appearance to it. And it also has this fruit on it. And sometimes people will take this fruit and actually make like this little zesty kind of pie with it. Kind of crazy, pretty amazing. Love this plant, but to see it used as a container plant to really add a unique texture out in the landscape is a fun way to use Flying Dragon. Yeah, Octavio that works for us calls us the IAI plant because if you get on one of those hooks, you're going to be screaming IAI. It's a fun plant though in the garden. It's a great plant to put in areas you want to keep deer out of because you'll provide a natural barrier and keeping animals from coming through this spiky resistant area. Really fun plant though, and one we love to offer here at Mr. Maple. Guys, this is pretty amazing. Pretty spectacular. Love how they got the Ceres back there in the back. They got wow. a large red Japanese maple over here. Red lace leaf going into fall color around here. We've got some koi strolling through the pond here. The waterfall. I mean, what an amazing garden to be in. Guys, I hope you've liked this walkthrough of the Serapeduke Gardens. This place is pretty spectacular. Love this gardens. These gardens are so fun, unique. You can tell that people have really put a lot of time and effort into creating this garden with a lot of thought, but also people who really know their plants. Right. There's so much going on here. It's an honor to get to come here and film. Uh, again, we're on the Maple Society tour. We kind of diverted and did our own little thing with Wesley and Brian. We're all just kind of plant geeking out. We've been just kind of catching some of our highlights as we come to them, but I hope you've enjoyed our little small guided tour of Sarah P. Duke Gardens today. It's on the University of Duke's campus and some spectacular gardens. If you get a chance to come check out the gardens, you definitely should. This place is amazing. The gardens are awesome. The plants are awesome. The layout of the plants is awesome. Really hope you all have enjoyed today's video. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.